Well, we are in for a treat this morning. I'm going to introduce, uh, some of you know him pretty well, others not. I'm going to introduce my friend Sean uh, in just a moment, who's going to share a message with us from John chapter 15. I'm excited about it. But before we do that, I want to save this a little announcement till after the announcements in the first half of the service, because I know some of you don't show up until now. Uh, and some of you, I want you to hear this. Um, God has blessed us, our, our church, with this facility uh, and with the entire Maywood Center uh, that, that uh, we're real close to paying off and using all of the funds that come in for church plants around the country and our ministries are in other, in, in, in other countries around the world. And so it's a great blessing God's given us, but with that blessing comes an incredible responsibility for its upkeep and maintenance. Um, Kenny and Angie Holland just got done renovating one of the suites for us for the use for the church and just did an amazing job with it. Uh, and we're so thankful for their gifts and skills and using that uh, in, in the renovation of one of the suites. But here's the thing. Like, we have a lot of those types of projects around this entire facility. And so here's my ask. I put on the, in, the Start Here booth a sheet of paper that just has name, skill, phone number, and email. Here's my ask of you. Man, woman, child, I don't care. But some of you have skills such that you can change doorknobs. Some of you can change light bulbs. Some of you can put paint on walls. Some of you can repair holes in walls. Some of you can renovate suites. You, there's a lot of you that can do a lot of things. My ask of you is that you would help manage and take care of the resource that God has given us in this facility and put your name on that piece of paper with that little skill that you may or may not be very good at. But if you've got some willing hands... Let us know what those are. And so as these things come up, we have a list of people that we can potentially call and say, hey, we got this project. Would you be willing to take care of this one issue for us? Does that make sense? Does that make sense? And so my great expectation that I'll have to be here till 1 o'clock because so many of you are stopping by and, and writing your name. And, and don't be one of those that says, well, you don't even call me for anything anytime. No, I don't know that. Uh, and so if you will take the, 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 the personal responsibility to put your name there with whatever skill you might be able to bless this, uh, uh, our resources with, I would, I would greatly appreciate that. Help us a great deal. Does that make sense? Okay. And if you know someone who's good at something, sign them up. <laughs> hey, um, Sean, come on up here. Some of you know Sean. Others of you are going to get to know him a little bit better. Sean has been with us on, in ministry here uh, for a few years. He's gone through the Discovery Center that we run for church planters. The idea is perhaps in the future planting a church, if yeah. God leads you that way, and I say so. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> no. something like if, that. No, 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 if God leads you <laughs> that way. Uh, it's so good to have Sean on staff. He does some pastoral care for us. He does uh, ministry like preaching uh, this morning. He's very involved with FCA. That is is more of his full-time gig in uh, doing FCA groups in the high schools in Fresno and Clovis and the middle school here and, and Liberty High School as well. Uh, he spoke at the LHS baccalaureate service and did a fantastic job. Spoke at three or four others in Fresno. Was just up at Hume Lake doing sports camps for three weeks mm -hmm. um, with a bunch of football players leading people to Jesus. Um, Sean uh, embodies some of the values of our church and what we really value uh, in people following Jesus. One, uh, he has a heart that has tuned itself to growing in wisdom and maturity um, and, and learning. He has a heart that is very correctable and responds well to correction and direction. He's got a heart that just wants to be a servant of the Lord, and wherever God takes him, he says yes on the front end. Um, he loves the Lord. He loves ministry. He loves his family. Um, and I didn't share this in the first service, Sean, but, but this is something that I have walked with a lot of pastors through as they're learning how to, how to preach and minister. And it's, it's, um, it's where Sean is right now, and it's, it's your great reflection of this uh, and, and learning this. This is the Apostle Paul in writing to the church in Corinth when Paul was starting out in ministry. He says, when I came to you, brothers, I did not come with eloquence or superior wisdom, as I proclaimed to you the testimony about God, for I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. I came to you in weakness and fear and with much trembling. Mm. My message uh, and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with the demonstration of the Spirit's power, so that your faith may not rest on men's wisdom, but on God's power. Amen. Uh, and, and that's where Sean is. Just Christ, Him crucified. It's a real simple story. 
Um, and I'm so excited for you to share it with us this morning. Sean, I love you. I'm proud of you. Give us a little bit of Jesus, huh? All right. Let's All right. Do it. Will you welcome Sean? <sighs> well, you guys didn't know I, I wrote that all for Pastor Carl to say. So um, <laughs> I got your check in my car. So I mean, it's not a check, it's a gift card. So uh, <laughs> yeah, you still have to put the amount on it. Uh, but church, I missed you guys. Uh, I have been gone for uh, about three, two weeks now. Um, like Pastor Carl said, I've been at Hume Lake. I uh, do FCA, uh, Fellowship of Christian Athletes. We take a lot of kids up there. Uh, for the last four week, four weekends in May, we took uh, over 1,400 kids, uh, 31 schools um, represented, um, and over 100 plus kids have either made their first time decision to follow Christ or rededicated their life. So <laughs> praise God for that um, and getting to do that. Uh, that, that's just a blessing to be a part of a ministry and good kingdom work. Um, today we'll be talking about John 15, verses 1 through 8. Uh, and we're just going to dive into it. And, and hopefully, I pray that the Holy Spirit just opens up our hearts and opens up um, this time that we get to uh, study and learn together uh, in, in, in hopes that, you know, that we can catch on to what a good kingdom fruit is that God um, has for us. Amen. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, just thank you for this time. Thank you for allowing us to, to meet in this place, Father God, this great facility, Lord, um, that we get to call home, Lord. And we, we pray that, uh, that you will be glorified in this place, that you will be honored in this place, Father God, uh, and that your words uh, will come to life uh, as they speak to us and, and bring correction and conviction, love, grace, mercy, and truth through the reading of your word, Father God. So we thank you and we love you in your precious anointing. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. John 15, verses 1 through 8. Uh, we're going we're gonna to hear about three things, uh, and, and we'll, we'll break them down. We'll go through them. Uh, one, God the Father, who represents the gardener. Um, so God the Father is the gardener. Uh, two, the Son, uh, Jesus, represents the vine. And uh, the third one is the branches, which represent us, right? Those that embody Christ, those that are Christ followers, those that have made Jesus Lord and Savior over their lives. Amen? Amen. Let's read Scripture. Uh, start in verse 1. I am the true vine, Jesus says. My Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Verse 4, remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit useless or unless you remain in me. Verse 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I remain and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up and thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. Verse 8, this is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. Amen. Amen to the ring of the word. As Pastor Carl gave his, his spill on needing volunteers, I was, I was talking with Kim during, after first service. I was like, man. I'm going to put my name down, but I'm going to put it down as somebody that can hold the doorknob before <laughs> still serving, right? It still counts, right? <laughs> Probably a shameful thing. My, my wife is actually the one that carries the tools in the house. Um, 
my, my dad did it all growing up. I was just a knucklehead. I just played football and stayed in the streets. So, um, <laughs> so I don't know about you guys, but for those that can, uh, maybe we'll meet each other here one day and I'll hold the paint as you paint the wall. So um, that is how I could be useful for, for the, the ask that Pastor Carl had for us today. Uh, Jesus goes off right here, right from the beginning. And for you young people, y'all know what this is. Like, like he flexes on everybody that's around him, right? Like he shows them like, you know, like he goes and he says, I am the true vine, right? And it's like, well, why did he say, I'm, why couldn't he just say I'm the vine? Right? He comes out and he's like, I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He had to, to make that statement because during this time, uh, there was a, a, a fine golden statue near the temple, and the Jews believed, and there was a vine that went up, the, went up it, and the Jews believed that they were the vine. Right? They thought that they were the connection to God. So Jesus has to come out right from the gates and is like, no, 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 I am the true vine. Don't 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 misconstrue it. Don't get it. Don't don't put your own definition on it. That is me. I'm him. Like I'm. That's me, right? So he lets uh, the people know right from the gates. As we talk about the Father, the Son, and the believers, the the gardener, the vine, and the branches, eat, these three each have their own specific function, right? So the Father, representing God, the gardener, tends to promote health and growth um, to its orchards. Uh, it protects and ensures production for his orchards. Uh, the sun, representing Jesus as the vine, uh, protects the necessary nutrients for good fruit to be produced. For us as believers, the, the branches, uh, we are to remain connected to the vine so that we can have the right nutrients to produce good fruit. Um, that there's things in our lives that will cause us to produce fruit, but it's not always good kingdom fruit. There's a lot of unproductive things that we produce in life. Um, for instance, and it's not throwing shade, but there's things that we do in everyday life that produce fruit, but it's not kingdom fruit. There's, there's things that we do or that we're trying to set up a family or rather be the income or the houses or the land, whatever it is, is that we set up these things uh, and it bears fruit, but it's not always good kingdom fruit. It's just unproductive fruit. It's just things that we don't really need in this life, right? But because, again, where, where, where we're at and how we live, it's seen as good fruit. But it's unproductive fruit compared to kingdom good fruit, Amen. Uh, Jesus goes on and he says in verse 2, he says, He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that uh, does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. When he says he's cutting off, he, he, he doesn't mean that he's like throwing it away or get, tossing it in or getting rid of it or getting rid of you. Um, what, he's, what he's talking about is that he needs to uplift you. Uh, during the culture back in these days, uh, a lot of vines, uh, a lot of roots were, were grown on the ground, um, and it would just get overshadowed with mud and dirt and filth, um, and they wouldn't get, it's nice, it, it wouldn't grow because the sun, uh, the leaves would not have enough sun for it to produce its uh, nutrients, to, to, for the sunlight, for it to produce good, good growing and good nutrients. So people, the gardeners had to come and uplift that and just clean them off. They had to clean off those vines that were dirty, that were full of muck, that was just um, in a bad place. They just needed to, they needed to be cleansed. And for some of you guys, right, as we're talking today, some of us need to just be clean. Where we're, where our branches and in, 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 inside of us and in even the outer appearance, we, we, we got dirt, where there's filth, there, there's mud on us, and we just need God to uplift us, Right? We need Jesus to uplift us and clean us off. And that's what he's saying right here, where he cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. Branches don't bear fruit if they're not abiding in Christ, as we see in verse 4. Right? If they're not abiding in Christ. So there's, there's 
There's things in our lives that need to be uplifted. There's us people, there's believers, us, that need to be uplifted and we need to be cleaned off. He also mentions it uh, back in, in John 13 where the washing of the feet, where Peter's like, Jesus, you'll never wash my feet. And Jesus said, if I don't wash your feet, you're not of me. He, did, he wasn't telling G, uh, Peter that he was exiled or if you don't wash your feet, you're, you're damnation, you're going to hell. He just needed G, Peter to understand that he needs to be clean. That he needed to just clean him up. There's some mud on him. There's some dirt on him. There's some filth that, that Jesus just needed to clean him off. And it, again, it said here that we need to understand in order for, for branches to grow or branches to be uplifted, they have to be abiding in Christ and remaining in Christ. Uh, we, go, we go on to say uh, back in, in this part of pruning, now, right? We talked about the cutoff. Now we're going into the pruning part. How many of us know that pruning is good? Right? Pruning is good. It's good for us. It's good for you. It's good for I. <laughs> it doesn't always feel good. Does it? Doesn't always feel good. But we know that either in this context, Jesus is saying that I need to uplift you or I need to prune you. Right? The Father needs to uplift you or he needs to prune you. And some of us in our lives, we just... In order for us to bear much good fruit, kingdom good fruit, we need to be pruned. There's some things in our life that God needs to prune for us because it's not allowing us, because we are pruning, we are producing good fruit, but we, he wants us to be even more fruitful in producing good fruit. There's, there's this, a, a lot of ways where a lot of us can, we can say that, man, we're doing a lot of good things. We're doing a lot of good work, and it may be for God. Like, I do a lot of good kingdom work. I do a lot, but it's out of obligation. We do a lot of kingdom work out of obligation and duty, and we don't do it out of the desire to serve and follow Jesus. In order for pruning to happen, you have to be connected to the vine and have that desire to serve Jesus. Not out, of, not out of obligation, not out of duty, but out of the desire to serve Christ and Christ alone. I know for, for, for me, it was something that was embedded in our, in our household when I was younger. At any given moment, it could be family prayer night. Any given moment with my family. My mom would, oh, time for family night. And he just said, oh my gosh, I should have went out. It's one of those things they're like, oh, I was halfway out. <laughs> but it was one of those things that it, it was like an obligation, right? When I was younger, going to church was, was an obligation. Some of y'all sitting here right now, y'all young people, y'all probably are in here for an obligation, right? Because it's your duty. My, my parents are here, right? <laughs> like I had to. Uh, <laughs> there's no high school meeting today, so I got to be in here. Right, so it's, there's a lot of things that are done out of obligation, but I'll I'll share this with you, parents. Soon, the desires of their heart will come to Christ. Because I know this for sure. Growing up, I dis highly disliked doing family prayer nights. Highly disliked. We had to memorize scripture, Lord's prayer. I had to learn the Lord's prayer in English and in Samoan. I don't even know the words that I'm saying in someone. All I know is that it's supposed to be the Lord's Prayer. <laughs> but these are the things that we had to do. And it, my, now looking back, it's like, man, that was out of duty and obligation. But now I got the desire to do it. So parents, don't give up on your kids. Don't stop those prayers for them. As soon as they wait, Pastor Carl said in his preaching about last two months ago, they're yours till you're 18, so out of eight, until they're 18, it's still out of obligation and duty. You got them. But these kids will, will still, will soon grow that desire to following Christ and understand what it was doing, what you were doing all along. But you, as, as leaders of their household, have to stay connected to the vine. A branch away from a, from a, from a vine is just a stick. A branch disconnected from the vine is just a stick. And some of you guys know this. Your parents used to tell you, go grab a stick outside. 
and then you know what happened after that. And then no explanation. Maybe you need to bring that back. I don't know. But it was one of those things, again, the encouragement is that the, the obligation and duty will turn into desire into following Jesus, the desire to serve at this great facility that we get to call home, church, the desire to get to serve our community, the desire to get to learn and grow in Christ, to stay connected to the vine. You want to know how to stay connected to the vine? This, this, all of this. You want to learn on how to grow in Christ? This, right? I know a lot of people like to read, you know, what is it, like seven steps to becoming a, the greatest follower of Jesus? This, this is what helps you. This is what, this is what leads you. This is what continues to help you grow and get rid of the, and be cleaned and be pruned. The word of God is what cleanses you. We go on to verse three. And he says, you already, you are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. And in Romans uh, 10, 17, Paul writes, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of the God, by the word of God. The Bible is priority for you producing good fruit. The Bible is priority. We must be in our word regularly. There's four ways that the word of God uh, cleanses us. Four ways. The one way, first way, is the conviction of sin. The more you read this, the more you'll be exposed to the sin that is in your life. The more you dive into this, the more you'll understand and unveil the sin that has been harboring in your life for years. This convicts you of sin. The second thing is that the word of God cleanses us and it, it, it pushes us to the, insp- to the inspiration of holiness, to inspire, to embody holiness. The, the third thing it does is that it promotes growth. In God's word, that causes, it causes us to grow maturely in our faith. The more time you spend in this, the more time you grow maturely in your faith. And the fourth thing it does is that it gives you power for victory. Amen? Amen. That was like a halfway amen. Y'all don't like winning? Huh? All right. I like winning. That's why I left Fresno High and I'm on my way to Central now. (laughs) Business decision. Got tired of losing on Friday nights. Got tired of Pastor Carl asking, hey, how did the game go? I don't got no explanation, man. Six to three to zero. There you go. That's, that's how it went. <laughs> My wife said, man, we just waste like five hours of our Fridays every night. I was like, thanks, babe. Appreciate you, man. But now I'm going to victory. Right down the road now. But the word of God gives us power for victory. Amen. It is in the Holy Spirit reminds us of what we have heard from God's word that we gain strength for victorious living in the world. The importance of daily intake of study of the word cannot be overstated. We, we need this. You and I, kingdom minded, in order to produce good kingdom fruit, we need to be in this, live within this, within your word. Verse 4, we go on, and he says, Remain in me as I remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. To remain in me is a daily decision to continue uh, to open yourself up to Jesus and stay connected to him. A daily decision. It's not this decision you made years ago and like, I'm going to stay connected to God and then come back 20 years later. As followers of Christ, as staying connected to the vine, it is a daily decision that you have to stay connected to the vine through his word, through spending time in his presence, through praise and worship, through prayer. That is how you stay connected to Jesus. His word breathes life. 
It's those daily decisions, those moment-by-moment decisions in each day that you have to make to produce good fruit. One of the fruits of the spirits is long-suffering. That was back in the old translations. and the new translations, it's patience, right? And for a lot of us, especially in America, patience to us is, you know, five cars deep in Starbucks, right? Like, God, oh, I'm going to have patience today, Lord. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold it. Oh, I'm going to let this car, this car is going to go in front of me. Lord, that's for you. Because I've had, I'm, ha- I'm working on my patience right now. Like, that's, that's what we think patience is, right? <laughs> and if God is working you in that way, man, you got a long way to go. <laughs> if that's a, but understand this. In the New King James Version, it, it refers to it as long-suffering. So it's much more deeper than a Starbucks line. It's how long you can suffer well. How long are you willing to suffer long for Christ? Are you, are you, no matter how hard life is getting, are you staying connected to the vine even in the times of the suffering gets so overbearing? Are you staying connected to the vine? Are you remaining in him? Are you abiding in him? So that you can produce good kingdom fruit. In verse 5, it says that I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Jesus is not just talking about you can do nothing. He's just trying to say, without me, you can't bear good kingdom fruit. I don't know about your life, but I, in my life, I want to bear good kingdom fruit. And for some of us, bearing those good kingdom fruit starts in the home first. Should start in the home. Your first ministry. That's where you bear good kingdom fruit. Again, as a young kid, I didn't understand this stuff. I didn't understand why we always had to do family prayer night. I understand why I had to learn scripture. I was like, man, that's what Sunday school is for. Like, why I got to do it at home too? You know, we get into this, this culture, the idea of like church is only for Sundays. Jesus is only meant for Sundays. Get it all in on Sunday, you'll be good throughout the rest of the week. Jesus is not saying that. He's not saying, apart from me, what he means by you can do nothing, you'll bear fruit. It just won't be kingdom good fruit. That's what he means when he's saying nothing. You can do nothing without me because, again, a branch off the vine is just a stick. It's not connected to anything. It's not getting its proper nutrients because it's disconnected now. And he, I see it even more now as a, as a grown adult when, when we're, me and my family and my siblings and we're all together and my mom will be like, oh, there's, there's five out of the six here. Family, family prayer night. If she can get us all in one room, automatic. Listen, that's automatic. That's why as soon as I see at least four in there, I'm out of there. <laughs> it's like, oh, we got to go home now. Or we'll push the kids. All right, all right, grandkids, she's talking to you guys. She said, like, no, we're talking, I'm talking to all you guys. But producing good kingdom fruit. May it, be start, may it start in your household. The kids, man, I swear, to, I, I believe that kids, man, they, they're in this place, especially high school graduates, that they're like in this place of like freedom. They're like, man, I can't wait. Get my diploma, show my parents, do this grad party, and I'm out of here. <laughs> Newsflash. Now you got to find your faith for yourself. Because a lot of the time while you're young and while you're in high school and living at home with your parents, your faith is based off your parents' faith. Rarely do we see kids go to church without their parents going to church. So now you got to step into this whole world of you living this faith out for yourself. You staying connected to the vine for yourself. 
That's the beauty in, in, in pointing everything to Jesus. That's the beauty in bearing good kingdom fruit. To see your kids and your young ones take advantage and take ownership of their own faith in Christ Jesus. Amen? He goes on in verse 6. It says that if you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. So Jesus goes from talking about bearing good fruit to abiding and remaining in him. Now, this passage doesn't necessarily uh, refer to the internal um, destiny, but it emphasized, the emphasis is, is very plain that there are no true disciples if they do not abide in Christ. There are no true disciples do, that do not abide in Christ. The, back, the branch must remain connected to the vine or it has no life and there is no lasting good kingdom fruit. <laughs> Stay connected to the vine. Let the Father cut off. Let him lift up and let him prune so that you can stay connected to the vine to receive those, those proper nutrients for you to produce good kingdom fruit. Amen? In verse 7, it says, if you, remind, if you remain in me and my words in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. Now, this, one, this, this is probably one that gets tossed out there so easily, right? Because this is the one where a lot of people just use in their own context. Ask whatever you want. Ask whatever you wish, and God will do it for you. All right, so we're over here asking for, I don't know, <laughs> Selfishly, I ask, man, God, let me get a, let me get an island, not the island I kept, my parents came from. I'm on my own island, right? Selfish desires, and we read things like this, and we're like, oh well, God wants us to have all these things. God wants, in the context of staying within the vine, and in the context of for the will for your life, the things you ask for don't line up with the will for your life that God has for you those things will not come to pass. Remaining in him and abiding in him, being a follower of Christ, as Pastor Carl said last week, it means to walk in obedience. That is a follower of Christ. One that walks in obedience to Christ. To abide in him, to stay connected to the vine. And in verse 8, this is my Father's glory, that you will bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. Plain and simple, Jesus closes it. He says, hey, if you bear fruit, if you're a follower of me, you must bear good kingdom fruit. If you're a disciple of mine, if you're a follower of mine, you must bear good kingdom fruit. How do we bear good kingdom fruit? Staying within the word. Living within the word. And all the freedom that it has for you. Living within the scriptures and the Holy Spirit that speaks to us through the word of God. That is how you bear good fruit. So here's the question. Where is your fruit? Where is your fruit? And even another question, who are your fruits? Are you discipling others? Are you serving others? And where are your fruit? Where do your fruit lay? Are you producing good kingdom fruit? Or are we just here producing unproductive fruit? may be meaningful to us here, but meaningless to the kingdom of God. The challenge is that we will bear good kingdom fruit. That you and I, as those that have said yes to following Jesus, for those that have said yes to making Jesus Lord and Savior of our life, that we will be those that bear good kingdom fruit. In whatever way that looks like, 
being lined up with the word of God. God the Father is the gardener. Jesus as the son is the vine. And you and I are the branches. Don't become a stick. Stay connected to the vine. Allow, to, allow yourself to be picked up out that dirt and lifted up. Allow yourself to be pruned by the gardener. Examine yourself. Examine your, take a personal examination. Is there clear and compelling evidence that you bear good kingdom fruit in your life? Ask yourself that question today, church. Is there clear and compelling evidence that you and I bear good kingdom fruit today? For what was done on the cross years ago by Jesus himself to die in our place and to be resurrected so that you and I can have this opportunity to repent of our sins and to live an eternal life with our Father. Amen? I hope this word goes forth with you throughout this week. I hope you understand when you make those moment-by-moment decisions, those daily decisions, that'll be on your, your mind to bear good kingdom fruit. I was excited studying this week and meeting with Pastor Carl and going over this. This is amazing stuff. It brought into question a lot to me as well. And I do work, I do do ministry full time. So I don't know how it feels to do a regular job and try to bear good fruit. I praise God for you guys that do. But for me, it's, it's these camps, it's these schools that I oversee, it's speaking at these baccalaureates. That is how I am being used to try to bear this good fruit in Jesus' name. That is the kingdom work that I am called to. Your kingdom work may look different. At your job sites, in school, in your families. I'm barely understanding that now of how important it is to have those family times to bear good fruit within your own family. I got a son now. 90% of the time, that boy don't listen. He's going he gonna to remember when I say go grab that stick, you know? <laughs> but now I'm getting to understand what it means to bear good fruit within my own family. Kingdom fruit. Praying over him. Reading Bible stories. I'll wake up and we'll watch worship. We ain't watching that other stuff he wants to watch. He cry all he wants as long as worship's on. And he'll sit there for hours crying. I'll just let him. When his mom's not there, of course. She always comes and saves the day. But when he's with daddy, yeah. I'm reading my word. We spend at least two hours in some worship, prayer time. Because I know for me, I want to produce good kingdom fruit in my life. I want to stay connected to the vine. I need God, the Father, to prune and to uplift some things in my life so that I can stay connected to the vine, so that I can produce good kingdom fruit. And that's my challenge and my hope to you today, church, is that you'll examine your life and ask yourself, is it clear and compelling evidence that you produce good kingdom fruit? If not, And let the Lord, pray that the Lord will uplift and prune Amen. Bye, heads with me, church. You know, me and Pastor Carl, we want to, we were talking about it. We want to take account to like those that would love prayer in this time. Those that, that, Hey, man, I just need to be lifted up during this time. So as your heads are bowed, if you, if you, 
need prayer for, to be uplifted or to be pruned by the gardener today, if you can just look up and make eye contact with me, I would love to pray for you. Amen. Amen. I see that. I see you. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Let's go into prayer. Heavenly Father, just thank you for this time that you allowed us, Father God, to hear your word, to praise, to worship you, to bring glory to your name, Father God. May you not just be honored in this place, but may you be honored in the lives that we live, Father God. May you uplift and prune the things, Father God, in our lives that need to be uplifted and pruned. May we stay so connected to the vine, Father God, to get our proper nutrients to live in this world, Father God. May we serve your kingdom and serve it well. Father God, and may we produce good kingdom fruit for your glory. Lord, we thank you and we love you in your precious and in your holy and in your matchless name, Father God. And everybody say, Amen.